Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Zentegra on Air podcast series. This is the like recurring episode of uh, like about IGIL. I am your host, Indrajit Khorpadi, Director of Solution Engineering, Zentegra Private Limited. And I have with me Mr. Simon Townsend from IGIL. Good morning, Hi, Indrajit. Simon. Good morning. How are oh. you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Just enjoyed a uh, nice weekend in the UK. Um, still raining here. What's the weather like over uh, over where you are? Yeah, here it's like uh, again, it's a rainy season. Yeah, started around a month back, full of rains. Sometimes we can able to see uh, sunlight for a while, but it was full on raining. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the out of interest? What's the temperature like? Uh, it is on an average uh, 24 to 30 degrees. So right now it's around 24, 25 degrees Celsius. Uh huh. So okay. So how is the season right now at your end? Yeah, yeah. So we're probably similar temperatures, right? Um, either just below 20, just above 20. We probably should be a lot. We should be a lot warmer than we are right now. But um, it's just interesting, right? I mean, obviously, uh, there's a lot of heat in the world at the moment, right? You look at Italy, you look at Greece, um, China, even parts of America. It's um, it's uh, yeah, probably quite worrying if you think about it. Um, uh, what's what's going on in the world at the moment? So hence hence why I asked. But um, yeah. I could definitely do with a little bit more sunshine and less rain, that's for sure. But uh, I don't want it too hot. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. And uh, this is like kind of a heat wave in a lot of countries nowadays, right? But even countries in extreme low temperature, they were like getting that kind of a 25 degree, 30 degree or like 30 degree plus temperature. I heard last year in UK itself, like it touched around uh, 38, 40 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Was that it right? Did. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. It's true. It's probably something. This this is a good this is a good plug, as they say, for uh, one of our ep- up and coming em- episodes, right? So one of the things that I know we have planned to talk about, I think, in a couple of weeks' time, is sustainability and how organisations can reduce their carbon footprint. And one of the conversations we need to have is why are we trying to reduce our carbon footprint? Um, and whether IT is is to blame or plays a part in that, like I think we've all got a responsibility to try and look after the planet. And one of the things that's happening at the moment, obviously, is global warming um, and these rising temperatures and these very very cold spells that we have. It does mean that our planet is changing, and we have to try and do as much as we can to save it. So, looking at how you can reuse and repurpose existing uh, devices is, is actually quite important. Um, whether that's mobile phones, whether that's PCs, whether it's servers, you know, and IGEL's, IGEL, as you know, has got a part to play in that. So we should definitely come back and talk about this in a couple of weeks' time when we talk about sustainability. Sure. So we'll cover that uh, topic in detail when we talk about sustainability. Uh, sure. So like... Uh, like I'll just give a quick recap of like last couple of episodes which we did. Uh, sure. So like last one with you and like before that we even had one uh, initial uh, like one for a couple of episodes. So like we covered in general about Agile OS, like all of Agile as a Agile as a company and then Agile as a solution, Agile OS as a solution. We covered a lot of aspects of Agile. In the last episode, uh, we covered overall. Uh, evolution of IGEL or how IGEL OS or like IGEL evolved from that uh, OS, the Linux based operating system tied up with a hardware and then like uh, software only kind of a company or like software only solution. Yeah. Recently, uh, a couple of months back, uh, even there was an announcement and uh, like uh, I came to know right or like even I seen the platform which is IGEL Cosmos, IGEL OS 12. And which is mm-hmm. kind of a booming thing, which is a new thing in the market right now. Everyone is talking about what is this, like what Agile Cosmos is, and uh, what how it is 
like better than the earlier version or like what are what are the enhancement in this particular flavor of Agile OS? So I think uh, obviously we'll cover all other topics, security, sustainability, and yeah, like a lot more about Agile. But with the curiosity, because a lot of people are uh, asking about it and like people want to know about the Cosmos. So I think let's uh, touch base on Agile Cosmos or Agile 12 OS today. Mm -hmm. so to start with, uh, yeah, so just like if, if you can just brief us about what this platform all about and uh, how it has started, what was the, what was the reason behind that? And yeah. whatever you want to say, because you're from IGEL, so you can talk more, you can give that insight to us. Yeah, yeah, sure, no problem at all. I think we, um, I think we spoke last time, uh, Intrigy, about uh, the journey, as you said, that, that IGEL has been on from hardware to software. We'd spoken about how we really focused on this operating system and this management platform that came together. And for lots of our customers, um, you know, they've currently got that solution deployed. In fact, they've got a version of the operating system deployed that's called OS 11. And then they've got the management server that's deployed that's managing all of those, all of those endpoints. But at the start of this year, we decided to rename and uh, launch the latest version of our product and that is called IGEL Cosmos. Um, and Cosmos is actually made up of three components. Um, you've still got an operating system that can be installed on all of the devices. You've then got the management server or the management infrastructure um, and that is what's powering the IT administrator, allowing them to manage all of those devices. But importantly, we've then got some cloud services, some services that iGel hosts and iGel delivers to help both the IT administrator and improve the employee's experience. So I think one of the things we spoke about last week was, you know, iGel does one thing and it does that thing really, really well. And today that one thing is iGel Cosmos. You know, we've got a hundred plus developers that are sat across Europe um, and every day they wake up and they are working on how do I improve this operating system? How do I improve the security of that operating system? How do I improve the management of all of those endpoints? How do I allow people to do updates faster? How do I deal with devices that are at home? How do I get new applications out to those employees quicker and what can we do in terms of our services to make that experience even better and so that's what you end up with you end up with um, a single product uh, a single SKU in fact right you just buy an IGEL Cosmos license that's all you need to buy and um, you know you get access to the operating system you can install it on a device um, uh, you can manage it and then you can use the cloud services. Um, and, you know, you asked, why do people do that? Uh, and, and, and what was behind it? Well, on the, you know, I think the first thing is, is it always comes down to security. Um, people are looking at iGel. Can you make this even more secure? And we've actually done that in Cosmos. Um, uh, OS 12 which is the next version of the operating system that ships as part of Cosmos is actually more secure than OS 11 was. And OS 11 was incredibly secure. Um, you know, you've got a read only file system. Um, you've got no open ports on the device itself or no inbound open ports on the device. You've got encrypted disks. You've got no data on the device. So it's very, very secure. We've made it considerably easier to manage. Um, you know, you think now lots and lots of people are all working from home. They might have their laptop uh, at home running iGel. We need to be able to remote manage that significantly easier. So we've changed the protocol that's being used. Everything is, again, more secure, but even easier than it was. Um, 
all of the devices, whether they're in your offices or whether they're at home, they're all calling back into this management server on a regular basis to get the latest applications, to get the latest configurations that IT may well have deployed. Um, and you know, we wanted to make sure that we continue to provide very rich user experiences. So we've updated lots of parts of the user interface. The UI has been uh, uplifted, but we've also introduced things like an onboarding service, which some of your um, listeners may well of they may be aware of, like Microsoft Intune and something called Autopilot, but one of the cloud services that we've introduced, this onboarding service, basically allows a organization to roll out new devices straight to their employees. And when those devices boot up with iGel, the first thing they do is they say, hey, what's the Wi-Fi and what's your email address? And they self-enroll to the iGel platform, which means we configure their endpoint we apply the security policies, we deploy all the applications. Um, and that's just one example of these of this cloud services that, that we've introduced at Cosmos. So in answer to your question, uh, Indrajit, uh, you know, Cosmos is a single product made up of three core components, the operating system, the management server, and then the cloud services that, that we IGEL provide yeah so it's actually uh, sounds interesting here you mentioned about cloud services so are mm -hmm. there any uh, what are those components so like are there any components under this cloud services you mentioned about onboarding service so are there yeah. any other components which are coming along with the agile os or cosmos os agile os 12 or cosmos os yeah yeah yes there are so um, the services that we provide um, today include um, a licensing portal, um, which very simply is where, when you buy the product, um, that's where the licenses go, and that's where your um, your management server talks to to get its licenses. Uh, so we can make sure that licenses can roam from one device to another and we can obviously and you can see how many devices are in use so the licensing portal is one we've also got a customer portal um, so that's where all your not just your licenses but all your support calls that you may well have single place for you to log on that's where you configure a number of your services you may well link your active directory into that you may well link your management server into that um, I've mentioned the onboarding service as a third, but there's also a fourth called the application portal. The application portal is where an IT administrator goes to to get the latest versions of applications. This probably is one of the biggest changes that we've made and one of the reasons why we're disrupting the industry. The application portal is where iGEL's partners such as Citrix, VMware, Microsoft, Chromium, uh, Control Up, and many, many others, they put the latest version of their applications into our application portal. And that means that as soon as they're in the portal, IT can then deploy them out to all of their employees. So this morning, as an example, I came into the office, I had a new version of uh, IGEL OS, I had a new version of the Chromium browser, and I had a new version of the AVD client. And I was able to log on and work, but in the background, my device was downloading the latest versions of those applications uh, from the App Store uh, because they have been updated, uh, sorry, in the App Portal, because they've been updated in the App Portal. Once those uh, applications have downloaded, I got a message asking me whether I wanted to reboot my device or wait until later. I chose to reboot and now I'm connected into my Azure virtual desktop environment um, from my Agile device. 
I'm actually talking to you from my IGL device connected to my Azure virtual desktop, which happens to be running in the Netherlands. And that's how I'm joining this Teams call uh, or Zoom call as it is today to do this podcast. So the application portal is a, a very important way of how we get applications out to our customers. Um, and it's a big change as well because historically, um, you know, there weren't many application updates, um, particularly in a Citrix or a VDI type of environment. We used to like deploy Citrix and then leave it alone for five or 10 years. Whereas today, uh, there are application updates every single week. If you don't have a new Citrix client or a new AVD client coming out, then Zoom is trying to update or uh, another component is trying to update. So allowing IT to seamlessly and frictionlessly update applications in an environment is very, very important today. And that's what the app portal does. Uh, the last service actually is one that we've not yet released. It's called the Insight Service. And the Insight Service is a, a data collection uh, service that is going to provide intelligence to our customers about their estate. Um, what versions of applications are they on? Uh, do they have any known vulnerabilities or old versions of code that, uh, or software that need to be updated? Have they not enabled uh, Zoom or Teams optimization in some of their environment that they have done in others? So based on uh, a customer's estate, based on the information that's being collected, the IGEL Insight Service provides insights into an organization's uh, environment giving recommendations on what configuration changes are required, what new applications should be downloaded and pushed out, and also what devices people have got. Um, making sure that, for instance, um, an employee's device isn't getting too old, right? Um, iGel is very clever in that it can work on devices that are four, five, six, even seven years old. But, you know, at some point, a device does break or a device does have too little RAM in it and those devices need to be changed. The Insight Service provides that information. So uh, to sort of finish up um, and in answer to your question, what are the cloud services? It's the support portal, it's the licensing portal, it's the onboarding service um, for new employees and new devices, it's the application portal and it will also include by the end of this year, that insight service that collects all of that data about a customer's environment. Yeah, thanks. Actually, uh, it actually gives a little bit understanding about IGL OS and the cloud services. Just one thing you mentioned about uh, app portal. So shall we shall we consider it uh, similar to the App Store or Google Play Store, where anyone can go and uh, whatever application they want to deploy on the endpoint, they just can uh, apply or they, they just can register that application and that application will be available on the endpoint. Shall we relate that? It's, do, do you know what? I, I don't think there's any harm in thinking about it like that. Um, and it is possible to allow an employee to access the portal and download an app. But in 99.9% .9 of the cases, it's not the employee that's accessing the portal. The application portal primarily has been designed for the IT administrator. So what happens is, is that the IT administrator or the management server that the IT administrator is using goes to the app portal, downloads the latest version of the applications, and then the IT administrator decides when to push them out. So this morning when I came into um, the office and I had a new version of AVD and a new version of my browser, they were available on the application portal, but it was my administrator that had decided to push them out to me. And that's fairly typical because in this new way of working, 
the IT administrator wants to keep a level of control, particularly from a security point of view and a change management point of view. Obviously, so, it has to be there, yeah. Co co correct. So you can configure it so that a user or an employee can get access to it, but typically it's, it's there for the, the administrator. But it's a big change. It's a big change from where IGEL's been. It's a big change from where the industry's been because historically all of these changes meant downloading a completely brand new version of the firmware. So you'd download like a two and a half gig file which contained iGel and all of the applications and you'd have to deploy that out. Whereas today, you're literally just deploying the applications out. It's so fast. I mean, most of my updates, I sat in my car the other day and I was able to tether my laptop to my mobile phone and I was able to download an application in under a minute. It just comes down in the background, applications uploaded. And it just means that your employees, they they continue to be able to use Zoom and Teams. They've got all the latest features from Citrix and VMware and AVD. Um, your web browsers are being kept up to date, so there's no vulnerabilities. It's super, super simple. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, anyone anyone can go to the IGEL um, uh, app portal. You can see it, you can log on, and you can see the applications that are there, and, and, and they're the applications that we that we deploy out. That's that's so cool. Actually, yes. Uh, so once, if, if the administrator approves it, it is kind of a thing, right? At ease, that particular user will get the required application. Yeah, it's, it's actually a very good uh, feature, I'll say. Uh, another question about inside service you mentioned about. So you said yeah. uh, it will actually give insight about the overall IGEL environment, the deployed IGEL environment. Uh, what mm -hmm. so is it even whether this service can even be used as a reporting portal, right? Where we can export the reports of like whatever counters we specify. Is there any kind of a reporting even coming out coming from this particular portal or where, where we can yeah. present it? Uh, to yeah. the required audience? Yeah, so um, th there is a fair amount of data that is already captured by the management server if you choose to enable it. So when I take a look in my management console as an IT administrator, I can already see my 10,000 machines. I can see very easily what version of iGel each of those machines is running. I can see what applications are deployed to them. I can also dive into that data and I can start to uh, use it for auditing reasons. I can say, you know, show me how many of them have got two gigabyte of RAM, four gigabyte of RAM, or eight gigabyte of RAM or, or more. The insight service is taking that information in its rawest sense and it's processing it against best practice and well-known configurations and applications. So it's got the ability to say, hey, look, your estate has got Citrix 2205 deployed and Citrix have updated you know, that application on our app portal. Therefore, you're one, you're one session out of date. Um, so it's the insight service is more about the recommendations of the raw data it's collecting to your point and to your question, a lot of the information that an organization may want is actually stored in the database of the management server and therefore could be extracted. What I will tell you, uh, Intergy, is that my personal recommendation would be that you look at other um, uh, solutions that are out there, um, such as ControlUp, um, such as um, you know, an EG Innovations or something like that. But a solution that can actually be deployed on the IGEL endpoint and even on the IGEL server to gather that data and present it in a much friendlier and, and faster way. In fact, we're gonna be working the Insight service will be working with some of those other partners to take that data and feed it into them. 
But I can tell you today, Control Up as an example, who I know are a partner of Zentegra's already, correct? Um, you know, their agent is not only sat in the virtual desktop, it's also sat on the IGEL endpoint. So that means that anywhere in the world, I can log on to the Control Up portal and I can see how my VDI machines are performing, but I can also see how my IGEL endpoints are performing. And they will call that data very quickly. They'll say, yep, you're running on, you're running IGEL on an LG Gram. It's got eight gigabyte of RAM. There's 150 uh, gigs worth of disk space free. But they'll go even further than that because they'll even tell you, is my Wi-Fi okay? Uh, you know, if, if we're, sat in, we're sat in this call now. Um, at number one, it's amazing that we're having a video call uh, and an audio call across across the world. But if you really think about what's happening is, is I've got a laptop running iGel, which is connecting into an Azure virtual desktop running in the Netherlands, which is then connecting to Zoom, which is then connecting to you over in India. There are so many things that could go wrong during this call Luckily today, nothing has gone wrong. In fact, Zoom's very good typically at, at, at keeping that up, but there are so many things that could go wrong. My Wi-Fi, my internet connection, my machine could have a CPU spike or a memory spike. The yeah. service on Zoom could go down. Your internet connection could, 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 could go down. And actually one of the great things that Control Up gives you the ability to do more than just collecting data um, uh, from the devices is, is give you that end-to-end -end visibility to allow you to pinpoint what went wrong. And so in answer to your question, again, 100%, we have got a ton of data um, and reports that we can run in our management console. The insight service is going to sit above that and provide recommendations, but I'd wrap all of that up in, you know, a digital ex employee experience platform um, for any organization that was truly serious about it and, and and you guys have done this quite a few times um, yes yeah. yeah control up is kind of a solution even as you correctly mentioned the highlight of because uh, during like right now even for our call there are multiple hops in between there are like your internet connection my internet connection there are a lot of factors behind it right and control up actually gives that detailed view right and with which any administrator can identify where is in case of any issue, where is that issue is, and like even provide, uh, like even we can remediate uh, that particular issue at that specific hop or that at for that specific layer. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's uh, that that answers my question. Uh, last thing I want to ask: uh, you mentioned about three primary three components, right? Agile, OS twelve, UMS mm -hmm. twelve and cloud services. So there are three components for this IGIL Cosmos or IGIL uh, 12 OS solution. So mm -hmm. how the licensing works, like whether is it kind of a separate licensing for all these components or yeah. how it works? Yeah, good, good, good question. And it is, um, it's very simple. It's, it's, it's one license per device for Cosmos. So if you've got 100 devices, you buy 100 Cosmos licenses. And that means that you can install IGEL OS on 100 machines. It means you can uh, uh, set up the management infrastructure and manage those machines. And it means you've got access to our cloud services. Um, you could have one management server. You could have 10 management servers. Um, the management server is very scalable. Tens of thousands of devices can be managed by one server, but people like to have high availability and DR, for instance. So lots of people have two or three servers. Those management servers, by the way, can be installed either on-prem, put in your data center, or they can be put into or put into the cloud. Um, my particular management server that I use, it's, it's my one that I own, I've placed it in Azure. Um, yep. It's got uh, uh, you know, it's got a registered domain name. It's got a, a certificate installed on it. And my, all of my devices that I use, regardless of whether I'm inside or outside the network, they all talk back to uh, uh, that cloud-based one. So, yeah, very simple. One license, 
um, uh, and you get access to anything. Here's the other really exciting thing is that um, we've obviously got a huge number of customers that have been on older versions of the software for a while. Um, any customer who has got active maintenance or active subscription is also entitled to Cosmos. So that means, you know, of the 12 and a half thousand customers that we've got, um, they all pretty much get this entitlement to go to the latest version of Cosmos as well. So that just means that people are constantly able to take the latest innovation from iGel, download it and, and, and deploy it. Um, and obviously work with organizations like yourselves to make sure that they're doing that in the most efficient um, and, and secure way. And I know you guys have already got some services, right, that allow people to move from older versions to new versions. Yeah. At the same time, you can obviously speak to people about the benefits of moving to Agile in the first place and, and perhaps leaving Windows behind or putting Windows into the cloud, should I say. <laughs> So do you mean to say with uh, UMS 12 or like management uh, software 12 from that, right? Any customer who is currently using Agile OS 11, they are uh, they are entitled to use Agile OS 12, Cosmos OS. So do you, yes. mean, do you mean from the management platform, both Agile OS 12 and 11 devices are possible to manage from UMS 12 console? Yeah, you've you, you've probably answered the most important or asked the most important question of the day. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for doing that. Um, yes, the new version of the management server um, will support both OS 11 and OS 12 devices. And this very simply just means that not only is a company entitled to move to Cosmos, but technically, they can do a phased migration, right? So it's very simple now to take the new version of the management console, upgrade it, and then manage, continue to manage your old OS 11 estate, and then look at doing the migration or deploy new OS 12 devices. I think this was probably one of the most important decisions that we made in the development uh, phases, uh, probably what, 12, 18 months ago, which was to make sure that the new management server can manage both the new and the old environment because it gives customers the ultimate flexibility. Um, and it allows us to deploy iGel out to new people on the new version without necessarily having to worry about upgrading, you know, a hospital or uh, you know, a clinician's environment that, that's still using OS 11 and will carry on supporting OS 11 until the end of 2025. So we've got a long uh, 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 journey ahead of us, um, allowing customers to move when they want to move. Um, yeah. So yeah, great question. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, that is actually a very good thing. Where And as we correctly mentioned, customers have that flexibility to overall, like they can decide, they can phase it, they can uh, migrate devices as per their convenience or like the way they want or department wise or like whatever categorization they have in their console. According to that, they can phase it and they can do it step by step. And as you correctly said, you guys are going to support IGIL OS 11 till 2025. So customers are having a lot of time. They can test a lot of things and then they can move 100% on IGIL OS 12. Yeah, that's exactly. actually a very good thing. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah, I think we have covered a lot of things. At least we uh, briefed, and I think like we have covered all the basic aspects of uh, Cosmos, IGL OS 12. At the last, before concluding, do you want to give something like, or just one liner or like anything you want to talk specific about IGL OS 12, right? Why customers should go for IGL OS 12 or Cosmos OS? Yeah, no, good good question. So first of all, you can go to igel.com forward slash Cosmos. So that's C-O-S-M-O-S. -S. So igel.com forward slash Cosmos. That will give you all of the uh, information that I've shared with you today. It will lay out where does the operating system sit, where does the management layer sit, and what are those uh, cloud services. But it'll also talk to you about those benefits. 
I think for me, the number one, two things that I really want to, I really want to highlight, and perhaps we'll talk about these in next week and the week after as well. Um, the way in which iGel now updates and applications can be deployed is modular. So what I want your listeners to think about is their mobile phones. I don't care whether it's an Android or an iPhone. Mobile phones operate in a very modular way. Your operating system on your phone can update independently from your apps. Your apps can update independently from your OS. When Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or whoever it is does an update, that update is coming down independently and it's incremental to and separate from anything else that's going on. The way in which IGEL OS 12 works as part of Cosmos is exactly the same. It just means that we end up with faster, more efficient updates in, in what is a very, very fast paced uh, world uh, right now. Um, and the other thing to note is, is that because we are now pushing updates out in this way and we can push the browser out and we can also push out applications such as Zoom and, and Teams, you know, there are lots of customers out there at the moment who are looking at iGel uh, and using iGel as a replacement for Google Chromebooks and Windows devices that just needed web access. You know, you don't need VDI. You know, iGel is very good at connecting into VDI. It's very good at connecting into desktop as a service. But there are tons of users out there, uh, lots of employees out there who just need access to office.com and Zoom. And they can do their job. Um, yeah. And so, you know, there's various different additional use cases that this new product brings that, um, you know, we're very excited to work with uh, Zentegra on. So it's good. Yeah. So with this, I think let's conclude today's episode and uh, Sounds good. looking forward to uh, learn a lot of things from you in our, our upcoming episodes. So with this, I would like to conclude uh, for today. It thanks thanks for your time, and let's connect next week, and we'll try to educate people or we'll try to talk more about Agile as a technology. Thanks, Simon. Thank Thanks you. for your time. Thank you so much. See you soon. Thank you. See you soon. Thanks.